Well, hello there and welcome to this webinar. This is the third webinar in the assessment cluster booklet. And let's go to the very front of the booklet just so that we reorientate ourselves and we cover what we have gone through so far. So up till now, we've um, covered the front page, we've covered the um, logistical stuff. So um, if you haven't already, make sure you write your name and all those details there. And in the very first webinar, we went through the short answer questions. We went through the short answer questions. Let me bring that up. Okay, we went through these questions here, the assessment task one written questions. Okay, then after that, in the second webinar, let me scroll down. In the second webinar, we went through the projects, okay? And um, we looked at how do you design, develop, trial, get feedback, and execute on your assessment tools, okay? And we talked a lot about the different ways that you can create tools, the um, scenario that we've got here, and uh, I went through the mapping, I went through creating the assessment plan, and all the details that were required for that scenario, okay? Now what we're going to do in this particular webinar is we're gonna look at the rest of the projects, which is um, a couple of RPL documents, and a couple of activities there, and we've also got a couple of validation activities as well. So I'm just gonna scroll down to page 137 on this. Now, if for any reason at all, your um, page numbers are slightly different or the formatting is slightly different, trust that the questions will be the same, okay? And trust that uh, we have not made significant changes to booklets at any time apart from aesthetic changes, okay? So, all right, let's see if I found the page. No, not yet, let me keep coming down. Okay, as you can see, it's a fairly large booklet. So let me keep coming down to 137. Okay, so 137, here we come. Okay. All right. So the next activity that we're going to go into is a validation activity. All right. And it is based on the unit prepare sandwiches. Okay. Now, ideally, this um, validation is going to be done in groups of three. Um, it can be done in groups of two. That's fine. But ideally, it's going to be done in groups of three. So what we're going to do is here in task 3.1, we're going to tick the box that says group validation. We're going to tick that box, okay? Meeting agenda is going to be things like, well, you're going to put in um, things like review um, documents for the unit um, prepare sandwiches, uh, make recommendations, fill out checklist, and uh, create assessment report. Okay, that's pretty much what's going to go in there. Okay, date of meeting is the date that you are having your meeting with your group. Okay, time of meeting, pretty self explanatory, put in the time. Okay, members, put in the names of the people that you are doing the activity with. Okay, what documents will you be reviewing? List them. Okay, so in order to answer that, well, we need to come down. So we've got a um, instructions. So assessment instructions to the candidate, assessment instructions to the assessor here. We also have the written assessment instrument, okay? And we've also got the practical assessment instrument, okay? And do we have anything else? No, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and in the box where it says, what documents will you be reviewing, list them. We're going to put um, assessment instructions. We're going to put uh, written test. And we're going to put practical test. Okay. What process will you and your team follow through your validation? Well, you could say, we will break the documents um, up and we will allocate different documents for different people to review. And then we'll have a discussion at the end of it and we'll fill out the checklist. That sounds like a good process to me. Otherwise, you could say, as a group, we will review all the documents and, um, make, and uh, make notes as we do, okay? Totally up to you how you fill that out. 
Legal and ethical requirements. Okay, now that could be can could be handled by anti discrimination. Um, what else have we got? Um, WHS legislation. Uh, we could have anti bullying. Um, we could have um, let's see anti disability oh, sorry disability legislation that you may need to think about. Okay, but that's pretty much it. Okay, number one thing there is privacy and confidentiality. We don't want. Um, details as a validation being shared with people that shouldn't know about it okay that's just common practice in the industry to maintain that confidentiality okay so what you're going to do is you're going to review and read through these documents that have been provided to you okay so the unit is prepare sandwiches what we're doing is we are doing a quality assurance check on these assessments okay so we're looking to see if these assessments are good enough and meet the principles of assessment okay so we're going to look through the written assessment and we're going to read through the uh, practical assessment and we're going to compare it against the unit to make sure that everything is being covered and it is being used effectively okay so we we're going to come down and we're going to take a look at the mapping Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to map where each item is being assessed. Okay, so if you take a look here, we've got the unit prepare sandwiches and we've got 1.1 confirm sandwich requirements based on the standard recipes or customer requests. So we're going to look back at the written test and the practical and check out where is that being assessed. Okay, so First of all, we got compare, so confirm sandwich requirements based on standard recipes. So let's go up. Uh, so in the written test, hmm, it says list two items which must be taken into account when identifying and selecting bread types and fillings. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Okay, list two items which must be taken into account when selecting and combining the ingredients of a sandwich. So possibly question one and two there, possibly, okay? So we're going to come down, and in the written test column there, we're going to put question one and two, okay? Possibly. I'm not 100% convinced on that one, but there's a little bit that relates there, okay? Practical task number, okay? Well, if we come back up here, we can see that practical task number one relates to item 1.1. So in here, practical dots, we're going to put one there. Okay, now next one. Identify and select bread types and fillings, taking account of quality, freshness, and stock rotation requirements. So that one, we could probably go, oh, practical task number, probably two. Okay. Now, identify so bread types. Um, so in the written test, let's see, is there anything related to bread types? Looking through, no, there's nothing related to bread types, okay? So that's fine, okay? It doesn't have to be assessed both ways. It just has to be assessed a minimum of one way, okay? So next one, use sandwich making methods based on requirements. What you're going to do is you're going to go through each of the items and you're going to identify where is it being assessed in the written questions or the practical task. If it is not being assessed in either, then you put a question mark in both boxes and we're going to make a note of that later on. Okay? So you're going to look at each of the items. So use toasting and heating equipment safely. You're going to look through the written questions and the practical task and see where is that being assessed. Now I need to let you know that not every item is being assessed. Okay. And the whole purpose of validation is to identify the gaps and to identify the problems. Okay. So you're going to work through it and as a group, you're going to identify all the items that are not being assessed properly, okay? 
So go through, put the um, put the item number, all right, work through the knowledge evidence, performance evidence, and um, you'll be good to go there. Now, we have a checklist, an assessment tool validation checklist. So if we want to fill this out, probably the best way to think about it is the following. Purpose of this validation, to check the quality of the assessment tool against the unit of competency. Okay, location of this validation, you could put in the organization of where you are currently um, conducting this validation. So it might be at the um, Success Training Academy um, Brisbane venue or the Melbourne venue or the Gold Coast venue, right? Wherever you are doing it. Validation date, okay? Whatever the date is that you are um, undergoing this validation. Validating peers is the name of the people in your group, okay? So you're gonna go through and now tick the boxes, all right? If it's a yes, great. If it's a no, put a no and put a comment, okay? So let's take a look. Assessment task, instructions and assessment conditions are clearly identified. Guidance, is it made clear when, where and how assessment will take place? Are the conditions of assessment identified? Is it made clear what will happen if the student has not performed to a satisfactory level for any particular task? Now, what we need to do is we need to go back to the assessment instructions and we need to check out, huh, do they actually provide very clear instructions? And also, do they actually mention what happens if somebody gets not yet satisfactory or not yet competent? We're looking through. I'm actually going to take a wild guess out there and I'm going to make a pretty wild statement. Actually say no. It actually doesn't mention uh, what will happen if they don't get all of the things correct and they need to resubmit. Okay, It doesn't actually talk about that. Also, let's check. Hmm, doesn't really talk about where it should take place. Hmm, maybe, but not really enough. And does it talk about how long it should be um, done for, this um, practical task? Well, not really. Okay, so that's a bit of a concern. So down here, okay, where it says yes or no, I'm probably going to tick a no on that and I'm going to put in comments or action required. I'm going to put be more specific about um, what would happen if the student um, gets not yet satisfactory and how they will need to resubmit. Okay. Uh, also location and time are not mentioned. Okay. Next one, language literacy and numeracy levels are appropriate to the audience being assessed. Well, this is up to you, as all of these things are. In your group, you're going to tick yes or no. And the question to ask yourself is, is the level of language appropriate for a student that may be at a cert one or a two or a three level? Now, looking through it, hmm, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that written test for a second. All right. It says, list two items which must be taken into account when selecting and combining the ingredients of the sandwich. Mm. To visually evaluate the dish and or adjust the presentation for greater eye appeal, you may need to adjust its appearance. This may involve, okay, list a minimum of five environmental considerations. Wow. Some of this language is a little bit above a cert one two or three level, okay? So, um, my comment could be something like, <laughs> no, and tone down the language. It is a little bit too high for the, um, for the AQF level of cert one or two, okay? So what you're going to do is you're gonna go through and tick yes or no for each of the items, okay? And, make your judgment about it, all right? And then if it's a no, put in a comment and a recommendation, okay? So you're gonna go through and answer these. 
Okay, at the end, you want to sign it and get your TA qualified assessor to sign it. And this will be typically your um, assessor from Success Training Academy. Okay. Coming down, we've got the validation report. Now, in here, you are going to put uh, the recommendations and findings that you've got for your uh, supposed manager or supervisor. So in here, you're going to put in the date, and you're going to start it out with a dear Mr. Smith, or pick in a hypothetical name, and dear Mr. Smith, blah, blah, um, my name is, and our group have recently done a validation on the unit, prepare sandwiches. Um, we have... Um, discovered the following things that need to be changed. Okay, and you're going to list out the things that need to be changed from the unit and from the assessments. Okay, so it could be things like uh, we noticed there was no version control on a particular document that needs to be added in, or a reasonable adjustment needs to be added to the assessment instructions, or uh, let's see, the, some of the languaging is too difficult for the AQF level, okay? So go ahead and write out those things that you're, um, you've identified as um, things that need to be fixed, okay? Participation acknowledgement, you're going to go through a number of participants, probably two or three, could be more, and put your name, sign it, um, tick yes, 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 then get somebody else in your group, Put their name, sign it, and um, tick yes, yes, yes. Obviously, this needs to be done for all of the group members, okay? <coughs> assessor observation checklist. This is going to be filled out by your assessor who observed you in the validation, okay? Now, task four, RPL activity, okay? So here, we are doing an RPL, but we are doing it via observing um, or evaluating some evidence that we have in front of us, okay? Now, um, just to give you a um, heads up, um, this is a um, RPL for a gentleman called Roy Keane. Now, Roy Keane, I need to give you the background, he has... He has requested RPL for the unit, make a presentation, okay? So what you're going to find down here is the beginnings of Roy Keane's uh, assessment, okay? So we're going to come up here and start filling this out. So purpose and aims of assessment. To review documents to see if Roy Keane is eligible for the unit make a presentation. Okay. Date assessment to take place. And you put in whatever date that you are doing this unit or this um, activity. Benchmark competency standard. You can say BSB, CMM, 401, make a presentation. Okay. BSB, CMM, 401, make a presentation. Okay. Oh, in this box here. Assessment context of placing training will occur. You can say um, over the phone and um, at uh, Success Training Academy RTO. Okay. Background of individual to be assessed. Well, this information you can gain from his resume, which will be in a couple of pages time. Okay. Organizational arrangements for conducting assessment. You could say, um, assessor will need time to review evidence um, and a phone conversation can be had over the telephone. Okay. Reasonable adjustment, provision for special support. In there, you could say, none required. Okay. Identify WHS hazards, including assess risks and control strategies. In there, you could simply say, um, assessment area to be inspected for any hazards. Okay. Instructions for assessor. You could say, um, assessor is to review documents, provide feedback to candidate, and um, 
go through interview questions where required, okay, and write out assessment report. Instructions to candidate. The candidate is to uh, label all evidence uh, correctly and provide it to the assessor in an organized fashion, okay? They will have uh, three weeks in order to provide their assessment um, evidence, okay? You could also mention they are also required to provide um, third-party reports uh, where instructed, okay? Qualification or competency. You can put in BSB, CMM, 401, um, make a presentation. Okay. So you're going to go through and tick each of these boxes. Candidate name, Roy Keane. Um, assessor name is your first name and last name. Okay. Employer contact details, you'll be able to grab that from his resume. Okay. Location of assessment, you can put in Success Training Academy. Assessment date, you can write that in. Time, you can write that in. Okay, so document description. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and identify the documents he has given us. So number one, identify um, document number one. Well, let's take a look. Resume. Okay, so in here we're going to write resume. Okay, number two. We're going to write, well, let's come down, job description. So document two, job description, okay? Uh, number three, coming down, number three. Okay, we've got the unit BSB ITU 302A, create electronic presentations, okay? So we can um, write that in number three. Okay, number four, let's come down. Number four is referee testimonial, okay, or third party letter, okay? So that's gonna go in number four. And number five, lo and behold, is a PowerPoint presentation, okay? It's a PowerPoint presentation, okay? So we're gonna come up, and in number five, we're gonna write PowerPoint presentation, okay? Now, we're gonna come down, and we're gonna start our review of his evidence. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through his evidence to see where is each item being assessed and is there enough evidence for us to make a decision, okay? So for example, plan and document presentation approach and intended outcomes. Well, that is probably gonna be covered, well, hmm, Plan and document presentation approach. I'm going to say that's probably going to be covered in document five, okay? Plan and document. We could probably say five in there. So we're going to put a five there. And we also can see that in his job description, he does plan, select, and I'll create electronic and hard copy aids and materials for presentations. Okay, so we can see um, from document two, um, let me come back here. In document two, he also does it as well. Okay, so we can go through and look at his evidence and identify where can we see evidence that he does do these things. Now, uh, we're going to read through his PowerPoint, we're going to look through his resume, his referee testimonial, his unit of competency that he's got here, okay, and we're going to do a very thorough, um, uh, so for example that one there, we're going to do a very thorough analysis of the evidence that's been provided, okay. Now the challenge is though that um, as a little bit of a punchline, this gentleman is actually not yet competent, okay? I'll tell you straight up, okay? He's not yet competent. Because if we actually look at, for example, 3.1, implement techniques to review the effectiveness of the presentation, there's actually no evidence that he has actually reviewed any of his presentations. So what would we put there? A question mark. And we will put further evidence required, okay? And you're going to find a number of these items where there is absolutely no evidence at all to substantiate these. Um, now, you're going to find um, some things are um, 
uh, I guess, substantiated and there's some evidence. Other things, there is absolutely no evidence at all. So be brutal and very critical as you go through it, okay? So for example, evidence of the following is essential. Preparation, delivery, and evaluation of the effectiveness of at least two presentations related to the Candace occupation or area of interest. He's actually only provided us with one example. So probably in here, we're gonna put a question mark and we're gonna put further evidence required, need to have one more example presentation, okay? So you're gonna go through the columns and just identify where is there proof that he does those things, okay? So put in the document number, okay? If there's nothing at all, you put in a question mark and put further evidence required, okay? So hopefully that's made sense, all right? Record of the assessment. So you're gonna come here, prepare a presentation, you're gonna tick, is it valid, authentic, current, and sufficient? Is deliver a presentation. Looking back at that list of things, um, is his evidence valid, authentic, current, and sufficient? I'll give you a hint. Critical aspects of, of assessment of evidence. Um, it's, that was the last one where it talked about um, providing two copies of presentations. So we could tick valid, authentic, current, but there's not enough of them, so we wouldn't tick sufficient. Okay. Comments and feedback. Well, I would tick not yet competent. And in here, I would put um, further evidence required and it's to be submitted within the next two weeks or something like that. Okay, assessor name is your name, sign it and put the date. Okay, up your process record and outcome. Okay, Roy Keane, pop his name in there, um, just put his initials there. And um, in here, you want to maybe, maybe tick that one. Okay, and you definitely want to tick resume there and you want to tick other. Okay, and assessor name, sign it, pop the date. And comments and feedback, you just put in, at this stage, Canda is not yet competent, okay? Written report, okay? In here, we're going to write, Dear Roy, okay? And we're going to give him some feedback. So we could say, at this stage, you are not yet competent in this unit because um, we still require evidence of the following, okay? And you're going to list out um, what would be required for him to provide and meet the guidelines of competency. Okay, now this part is gonna be filled out by your Success Training Academy Assessor. They're gonna go through and tick the boxes. Okay, um, they're gonna fill out this part, of course. Okay, now RPL project. Okay, now previously in the last one, um, it was more of a evidence-based uh, RPL. This time what we're going to do is we're actually going to create the RPL ourselves, okay? So the unit is show social and cultural sensitivity, okay? And we are imagining that you are going to RPL somebody in your workplace. On the unit, show social and cultural uh, sensitivity, okay? That's the unit that we're working with. And so the purpose and aims of assessment is to assess the candidate's ability to show social and cultural responsibility, okay? Date assessment due, put in the date. Okay, benchmark competency standard, um, put in the name of the unit. Assessment context or place training will occur. You can put in um, interview at Success Training Academy um, RTO, or you can put in interview at and put in the name of your workplace. Okay, target group to be assessed. Go ahead and describe um, your staff member. So they could be um, a teacher at TAFE, they could be um, nurse at hospital, they could be any job role at all, but just let, um, let everyone know what this um, job role is. So we've got some context for it. Organizational arrangements for conducting assessment. So you could write in, um, candidate will need time away from work. Um, you could say that the interview will need to be recorded. Um, and you could say evidence will need to be stored on internal drive, things like that. Okay. Um, extra staff may be required to cover a shift. 
okay? Privacy and confidentiality. Only candidate will have access to their records, okay? And uh, all evidence will be considered confidential. A reasonable adjustment, provision for specialist support, okay? In there, you can write in, um, the interview will be able to be conducted over the phone. Um, candidate does not have to actually attend face-to-face. -face. Identify WHS hazards. In there, you could write in, interview area will be inspected, okay? Assessment methods. You could write in, um, what have we got? We've got um, observation, observation checklist completed, okay? We may have a verbal interview and evidence to be gathered, recorded interview. We may have a third party, and you could write um, third party, party letter signed, okay? So materials and resources required, we could say recording device, um, interview questions, benchmark answers, uh, what else? Uh, we could have um, interview room and of course telephone. Okay, plan, review, and approval process. Okay, um, we can say um, um, plan will be submitted to academic manager for approval. Okay, manager approval, just pop in the, the initials of your current manager. Okay, so now we're going to read through the unit. And we've made some executive decisions. We've decided that a verbal interview, a portfolio, and a third party assessment um, report will be how we've decided to assess the unit. So when we come to here, we're going to go, um, what have we got here? Verbal Q&A. So we've got verbal interview, we've got portfolio, and we've got a third party letter. Okay, so have a think about those methods and the evidence that you would gather to prove that this candidate can do what it, um, what is required from the unit. Okay, so we need to go through and make some executive decisions, okay? Respect customers and colleagues from different social and cultural groups and treat them with respect and sensitivity. So if you needed to assess somebody on that, would you prefer to assess them via verbally asking them questions or asking them to show you examples of things that they've done in a previous workplace or um, a third party letter. So getting someone else to substantiate that yes, they can do that. Probably my initial choice would be verbal Q&A. Okay, my initial choice, okay? Now, you can have more than one ways, that's totally fine that you assess this, okay? Consider social and cultural differences in all verbal and nonverbal communication, okay? Probably I'm gonna go verbal, and maybe third party on that, okay? Respond to others in a non-discriminatory way. Um, again, I might go verbal, so I'm gonna tick that box and I'm gonna tick um, third party, okay? Make attempts to overcome language barriers. I'm probably gonna tick verbal and maybe even third party, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of these items and I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna assess it, okay? Yes, you can assess it multiple ways, that's totally fine. Okay, um, so for example, anti-discrimination policies for industry and specific um, organization. Again, that's probably gonna be verbal Q&A, all right. Um, you're gonna come through and uh, tick each of the boxes. <coughs> know that not everything is gonna be verbal Q&A, not everything's gonna be third party, not everything's gonna be portfolio. You do need to have a good solid mix, okay. You're going to come down, and now we're going to make the verbal interview tool, okay? So name of candidate, you can put in the name of the staff member that you're working with um, or the classmate that you're going to run this RPL assessment tool on. Name of assessor is your name. Date of assessment is the date um, of, to, of when you're filling this out. Unit of competency, um, show cultural and social sensitivity. All right, workplace is wherever you currently work. Okay, when it come, we are gonna come down here and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the verbal interview questions. We're gonna create the verbal interview questions. So for example, let's come up here. All right, and if 
we have ticked verbal Q&A for 1.1 here. Respect customers and colleagues from different social and cultural groups and treat them with respect and sensitivity. What we're going to do is we're going to come down here and in here we're going to put 1.1. And we're going to create a question that would assess 1.1, such as, tell me three ways that you show cultural sensitivity to your customers, okay? Or it could be, tell me the last time you showed cultural um, sensitivity to one of your customers, okay? So, all we are doing is we are looking at all the items that we have ticked verbal Q&A on, and we're gonna make a question on it. So, let's imagine that um, next one is 1.4. So, I'm gonna come down here, and we're going to put in 1.4, okay? And we're going to make a question about 1.4. So it could be, um, what are two ways that you could overcome language barriers if you were speaking to someone that did not speak English as well as you did? Okay, so I'm hoping that you're understanding the nature of the questions and how we're creating them, okay? At this stage, you are leaving out the answer. You're just putting in the question, okay? So you're gonna go through, and let me just erase that for a moment. You're gonna go through, and for each of the items that you are verbal q and a um, across performance criteria and performance evidence and knowledge evidence, okay? You're gonna create questions for any item that you've ticked verbal Q&A, okay? Um, so, you're gonna go through and probably in total, you're gonna come up with around 10 questions, okay? And if you find that you have things that overlap, absolutely, you can put in multiple items. For example, 1.1, you could put in PE1, and maybe KE2 as well, okay? But, the idea is that you're gonna end up with 10 questions, okay? 10 questions, okay? If there's not 10 filled out, um, the task won't be complete, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and create questions on each of those, okay? Coming down, now what you are going to do is you are actually gonna use this RPL um, interview list with a candidate. So you're actually gonna simulate using it. So you're gonna go through and ask them the questions but remember, their responses are not really the most important thing. It's just for you to get the experience of asking the questions, and you're gonna write down exactly what they say there. You can write down bullet points, that's totally fine. Then you're going to mark them as competent or not yet. You're gonna put in some feedback. You're gonna sign it. You're gonna get them to sign it, put the date, put the date, okay? Then, uh, where it says learner signature, that's you. Okay, you sign it and pop the date. Okay. Now, validation activity, session one. Okay. Now, from here, we have two more validation tasks. Okay, this one is about the unit um, BSB ITU 201A, which is um, produce simple word process documents. Okay. And then later on, we have another one, which is ICT WEB 201. Okay and that's a different unit. What we're now gonna do is a validation, and it's very, very similar to before. Very, very similar to before. So you may even find that um, you write in very similar things to what you wrote before for a couple of these sections. So 5.1, tick, group validation, okay? Meeting agenda. We will review um, assessment tools against unit of competency and make recommendations. That's what you'll put in that box there. Okay, date of meeting is the date that the meeting is taking place. Time of meeting, put that in. Members, put in the names of your group, people, okay? What documents will you be reviewing? List them, all right? So we're gonna come down. What documents have we got? Well, we've got the assessment instructions, awesome. And we've got the written assessment, awesome. All right, and we've got a practical assessment. Okay, cool. And we also have the marking guide. And we have the marking guide for the practical, okay? So, okay. 
coming down. So that's what we're going to put in there. What documents? So you got the markers guide, the written test, all those things that we just went through. Okay. What process will you and your team follow through your validation? You could say we will review each document as a group and discuss it, or you could say we will allocate different documents to different people. Blah blah. Okay. Legal and ethical. You can write in privacy and confidentiality. Um, you could write in anti-discrimination. Um, whatever laws would be applicable to this meeting. Okay. Coming down. All right. Produce a simple work process documents. Now, this is the beginning of the assessment material that we are validating. Okay. So we're going to read through the assessment instructions. Okay. We're going to read through the written test. Okay. We're going to read through the practical. And we're going to read through the markers guide. We're going to read through the markers guide. Okay. And now we're going to discover and discuss where each item is being assessed. So just like before, it says, number one, hit 1.1, use safe work practice to ensure economic worker organization energy and resource conservation requirements are addressed. So, for example, in here we can see the keyword of ergonomic. So if we come up to the top here and we take a look at the practical, Take a look at the practical. Demonstrate how you, how and where you would save a letter. No, not that. Okay. Um, let's see. Number five. Demonstrate how you would set up a workstation ergonomically. Okay. So item five there. Okay. So we can say practical task number five. Okay. And written questions. Let's take a look. Let's see in the written questions if there's anything in relation to ergonomics. Okay. Mm. Yes, question one there. What are two requirements that must be met in order to ensure work safe work practices are addressed? Okay. So we got that. And even question two as well. So we got question one and question two. All right. So we're going to come down here and written questions. Question one and question two. Good. All right. So, identify document purpose, audience, the presentation requirements, and clarify with relevant personnel as required. So, you're going to go back to those documents and check where are they being assessed. What item number in the questions, what item number in the practical. Are they always being assessed? No. Are there gaps in the assessment? Yes. So, if there is a gap, go ahead. You can just put in a question mark, okay? And that'll let you know later on when you write up your report what needs to be mentioned. Okay? So you can go through and for each of the items, identify where is it being assessed. Okay? Now, you need to come down, do the required skills and knowledge. Okay? And the specific evidence requirements. Okay? Make sure that's being assessed. Okay? Candidate signatures you. Signature of Qualified TA Assessor is Success Training Academy staff, okay? Now we're going to come down, and we're now going to fill out the checklist, similar to what we did before for Prefer Sandwiches, okay? Purpose of this validation, to check the quality of the assessment against the unit of competency, okay? Location of validation, uh, wherever you're doing the validation. Validation date, pop that in, time, okay, and... Now you're going to go through and tick yes or a no. If it's a no, put in a comment. Okay, this is completely up to you. It's your decision, your judgment, and there is no right or wrong on this. Having said that, there are a lot of no's that you can find in this checklist. And also, if you tick yes for everything, probably we will not mark you as correct. Okay, because we know there's some inherent flaws in here. Okay, so... Also up here in the this section up here, there are things that are not being assessed properly. Okay, so we're expecting you to identify those. Okay, now as we come down, let's just pick one. Um, opportunities provided for evidence to be gathered over a period of time. Um, is assessment conducted on more than one occasion? Uh, could be more of a no on that one. Okay, and but just go through and make your own judgments. Okay. So go ahead and tick yes as a no, um, and put in some comments. Okay, candidate signature is you, signature qualified um, TA assessor is Success Training Academy Assessor. 
Okay, validation report. This is where we're going to write up our findings again. And so put in the date and put in, um, dear Mr. Smith, we've recently done a validation on the unit XYZ and uh, we recommend the following changes. Okay. And you'll get that information from the checklist that you completed above. Okay. Now, participation acknowledgement, just like before, number of participants, three, um, and participant name is uh, you, sign it, tick yes, yes, yes. Okay. Next part is get your participant, your group member to put their name, sign it, tick, tick, yes, 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 all right, and get that done. All right, this section is filled out by your TAE assessor. Um, but you will need to put your name and sign and put the date here. Okay. Now, validation activity, session two. All right. This one is looking at use social media tools for collaboration and engagement. Okay. So, just like before, group validation, tick that box. Okay. It's another validation session. So, pretty much what you write is going to be very similar to what you wrote the other time. All right. Just above. All right. Now, this unit is use social media tools for collaboration and engagement. So, naturally leave that blank. All right. So, these are the tools that you'll be validating. Okay. Now, this is a um, assessment instructions. Okay. So, read through those. Uh, we've got observation checklist. Okay. And we've got written questions. Okay. And we've got marking guide for assessor. We've got marking guide for assessor. Okay, marking guide for assessor on the written questions. Okay. And now we've got our uh, matrix and we've got our checklist again. So 1.1, explain the characteristics of the term social media. So in here, you're going to put in what task number relates to explain the characteristics of some term social media. So um, I'll help you out with this one. So um, if we come up and we take a look at the written questions, well, we could see that written question number one takes care of that. Okay. So written question coming down. Written question one takes care of that one. But also practical task number, if we come up here, yeah. Okay. If we take a look at the assessment tool, the assessment instructions, it actually says task 1A. 1A says define the term social media. So down here, in this section here, we're going to put task 1A, okay? Identify different types of social media tools and applications. Again, you're going to go through the written questions and you're going to look through the practical task, which is this here, okay? So this is a practical task. So we've got task 1, A, B, C, D, task 2, A, B, C, D, oh, sorry, A, B, C, yeah, okay? So those are your practical task items that you are referencing, okay? If you're going to come down and you're going to work through this checklist, 1.2, 1.3, and just like we've done before. Is every item being assessed? No. Are there gaps? Yes, okay? So now we're going to come to the checklist and we're going to fill it out just like we did in a similar fashion, okay? We're going to tick yeses, noes, put in some comments, okay? Now we're going to fill, come down and fill out the session um, validation report. And uh, this is going to be put in the date and put, Dear Mr. Smith, we recently validated the unit um, uh, ICT, WEB, 201, um, and we have discovered the following problems. We recommend the following changes. Okay. Again, we've got another participation acknowledgement, number of participants, and then your name, sign it, yes, yes, yes. Get them to get the other members of your team to do exactly the same. Okay. This section is filled out by your assessor and put your name, sign it, put the date. All right. So now this section, put your signature and pop the date. Okay. And that, folks, is the end of the assessment cluster booklet. Okay. The task that you go through in this section um, 
there's a little bit more, I guess, room for self-interpretation and uh, the expectations um, are certainly uh, clear and uh, we are expecting you to be able to go through and find um, the mistakes and the validations. At the same time, we're not expecting everyone to come up with the same answers, if that makes sense. Okay, So... Go through the activities, make sure that you do them in a group, um, make sure that you discuss your findings with other key uh, members of your group, and make sure that we can see great authenticity in your answers as well. All right. So good luck with your assessments. As always, if you've got any questions at all academically, um, send them through to the office, give them a call, send them an email, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay. So thank you so much for watching the webinar. And... Good luck with your assessment.